There's the Mount of Olives and Temple Mount. And the Church of St. Xavier, the headquarters of the Franciscans. Boarding our bus for the Mount of Olives and Mount Zion. Busy day today. To guide and direct our journey today and for the rest of this trip, for the rest of our lives, to be a total surrender to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord, the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. at Gethsemane for Mass. We're getting off the bus. This is the Eastern Wall. There you see the Golden Gate right there. And this is the Kidron Valley down below. And we're now going into the Church of Gethsemane for Mass. Garden of Gethsemane entrance. Here comes our folks under the Bougainvilleas. So we're going through the Garden of Gethsemane. These are the olive trees. Several, at least six of them were here at the time of Christ. The ones with the big trunks like that one there and this one here. They had mouths and ears. They would tell you what they heard Jesus say and what happened here in the garden. So we're celebrating Mass here in Gethsemane. Here's our folks all in a nice enclosed private area. That is the rock where Jesus sweat drops of blood when he prayed here in the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh. This is the cave of the teaching. This is where Jesus taught his disciples to pray the Our Father. This is the cave where they'd stop at noon on the way back and forth to stay uh, cooler. And so we're here going to say the Our Father. This is the Pater Noster, the place where Jesus taught his disciples to pray the Pater Noster, our Father. And over 160 different languages are represented here with the prayer of Jesus that he taught them all the way around and inside the church. Very nice. In 2007, my wife and I were, we had been evangelicals for 25 years and um, we've been re considering returning to the Catholic Church. <laughs> in case of for example. And, um, uh, I, someone recommended a book. I picked it up. It was it was Steve Ray's book, <laughs> Crossing the Tiber, and we were on vacation. And I was sitting by the pool reading that book, and I kept turning to Don and saying, "You know, you're not gonna believe this. this. Is, you're not gonna believe what this guy's saying." Be, and and it was it spoke so much to our experience in the evangelical church, and uh, and it really was the uh, the straw that broke the camel's back. And we returned to the church. It's been 15 years, mm. and to walk out of that 
uh, chapel in there and see him speaking. We're on. A, we're not with the group. We're in a, in a different group had, led by our, our great father Roy. Uh, we're just so so thankful to for you Ray, for writing that book and Stephen. It's just just a real thank you. Right. Brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> and when he has said these things and they were looking on, he was lifted up with a, and a cloud took him out of their sight. What an understatement something as spectacular as the ascension of Christ and it's done in a little sentence and he was lifted up in a cloud took him out of their sight when he went up the last thing they saw was his dirty feet the bottom of his dirty feet when he got up to the clouds he turned back around this isn't included here and of course you got to read between the lines he read, he said and while and when he's almost up oh and by the way guys don't forget to read my book <laughs> There was no book. What did Jesus leave behind? A New Testament for us to read and decide for ourselves how to get saved and what the church should be? He left 12 men. That's all he left is 12 men. And those men went out and began to preach and teach and practice what he had taught them. That became the apostolic tradition. So you have first the magisterium. Then the apostolic tradition, which they taught and practiced. Some of their writings became collected at the end of the 4th century and put into a book called the New Testament. There was no New Testament for the first 400 years. They went on the basis of the magisterium, the living teaching authority of the church, and the apostolic tradition. And the emerging books of the New Testament. We're on the Mount of Olives. Everybody's filling in the seats. I'm going to be giving them the story of salvation from Adam and Eve until today. Right here in front of their eyes, the whole story. See, right there are the two domes of the Holy Sepulcher. That's the Holy Sepulcher right there. There is the Church of Dormition, and right next to it is the Upper Room. Kidron Valley, Garden of Gethsemane is right down there. We're going to tell them the whole story. God says, mind your own business. You go until I tell you to stop. And Abram, there's a poem. I just love it. It's in my movie that I made on Abraham. And in the poem, it's by a wonderful priest. And he says, and I'm only paraphrasing a few lines. He said, you want me to do what? You haven't spoken for four generations. And now out of nowhere, you blast like thunder out of heaven. You tell me to leave the ancestors, the tombs of my ancestors to leave my home and my family. You come very late, Lord. You come very late. But my camels will leave in the morning. <laughs> I get goosebumps every time I quote it, and I'm just paraphrasing a few lines from it. It's one of the most beautiful poems I've ever read. Abraham is the father of faith. He gives us an example. That's why God could build on him. His name is Abram. He packs up his camels. He comes all the way here. That's at least 1,600 miles. And with flocks and herds traveling 26 miles a day, roughly, with all your flocks and herds, calculate 1,600 miles divided by 6 miles per day. And here's the sandwiches being made. Look at that. Beautiful, huh? And there's the shawarma meat to make the sandwiches in the pita bread. And there they're coming. French fries, too. I don't know if we can get a better view for lunch than this on this terrace that we're at in the Mount of Olives. But we're going to try this new place, shawarma meat with beef up here. And there again is the domes, the domes of the Holy Sepulchre right there in view of us while we're eating. Right ahead of us here is the Church of Mary's Dormition, but they're under renovation. We usually go in there, but we can't now because it's closed. So we're going instead over here to the upper room. <laughs> The upper room's pretty full, so we're doing our talk down here, and then we'll take everybody up and let them walk through. It's actually right over that and inside that wall. We're praying the mysteries of the rosary associated with the upper room, the institution of the Eucharist, and the descent of the Holy Spirit. We normally also pray 
the Assumption of Mary and the coronation, but we can't get into that church anymore until it's finished renovation. So we're praying the rosary mysteries here. We're now entering the upper room. Doesn't look very special from here, but four sacraments took place here. Institution of the priesthood, institution of the Eucharist, confession, and the descent of the Holy Spirit. So it's also Pentecost. All that took place in this geographical area, in this upper room, still full of people. There was 120 there, because you needed 120 to start a new community, and that's what they were doing. Mary was here also because of the birthday of the church. She was giving birth to the spiritual body of Christ. We're on our way down to St. Peter in Galicantu, where Peter denied Jesus and where Jesus was tried over Holy Thursday. You get perspective, there's the Mount of Olives, there's Caiaphas's house and the dungeon of Holy Thursday. We are descending down into the cistern pit where Jesus was kept over Holy Thursday night. We're gonna read Psalm 88, which is prophetic. Jesus was lowered down through that hole in this pit. Those windows are only there for our benefit. This was windowless at the time of Christ. This is Psalm 88, which talks about being lowered into the pit. It certainly seems prophetic to me. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. This is a Roman road that Jesus came up for the Last Supper. And then went down to the Garden of Gethsemane, which is over there. Then he was arrested and brought back up the steps to the house of Caiaphas, where he was imprisoned. And then on Friday, he went back down these steps again to be crucified. Our folks now are touching their rosaries on the very steps that Jesus walked on. The city was at the top of Christ. We'll do that, and then we're going to be on our way back to the hotel, uh, right the down there is the Valley of Hinnom, which was uh, Gehenna, hell the River. of the Bible. We don't want to treat our groups as just a normal pilgrimage group. We bring them to the rooftop here at the Notre Dame Center overlooking Jerusalem. Look at that view they get. There's the domes of the Holy Sepulcher are right there where we just were the last couple days. And Temple Mount and Owl, the Mount of Olives where we had lunch looking out over this place. It's a beautiful sight and here's our... Very good. Excellent. It's fun watching you prepare it all. Father signing wedding certificates from Cana and everybody's getting their wine poured for them, whatever they want, white or red, and we're in for a very nice evening here, just settling and looking out over the city of Jerusalem. Here's our folks all settle in and enjoying their appetizers and bread and salads are coming. Wonderful day. We're looking forward to tomorrow. Good day, Armour. Excellent day. Beautiful and, day, and tomorrow is another big, beautiful day. And here we close out the movie overlooking Jerusalem at night. Good night, everyone.